Hello and welcome to an introduction to using sine waves and other operators in Trials Fusion Track Editor. Uh, the purpose of this video is to maybe expand a little on uh, the way that you can introduce variables in a more programming sort of way rather than relying on the stock movement. Um, it's still complicated and uh, this is designed for intermediate levels of, uh, of people who are a familiar with the concepts of sine, cosine, and, and so on. But hopefully anyone should be able to fire up the, the editor and be able to do uh, what I'm about to show here. Now, if you go to your object um, choices and go to examples, which apparently I've lost. Where is it? Um, there. And choose 001. It shows a car. It's out. Don't worry about the angle it's at now. And the, it moves the car 30 units uh, across the x-axis. Now I've just tweaked that a little and what I did was under the uh, object position event I changed it from the x-axis to the yaw uh, and then under linear I took uh, took out the quadratic ease in, it, ease in and out and finally I changed the end to 359. What does that mean in, in any sort of terms? Well, the yaw will obviously rotate on the y-axis um, and the duration is three seconds, 180 ticks. That's dictated by your interval trigger. Don't worry about that. That's always set at one unless you unless for some reason you want to change that. That's this operator here, um, which comes as part of the example. You don't have to mess with this in this little brief tutorial. So this means the data source is going to go from 0 to 359 over a 3 second period. And what this means in the real world is the car will rotate a full 360 in 3 seconds. And that's exactly what it does. And now I've got it on loop, um, and if you put it on reverse, then it would bounce back and so on. That's all done here through... Um, sorry, that's all done here. If I can grab it, come here through these options here, looping, invert second half, and so on. That would make it bounce back. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Boing, boing, and so on. Now, if you obviously put that on loop as well, it would just bounce back and forward in a very linear fashion. Again, you could introduce the quadratic in out, but for the purposes of this, I just want a smooth loop. And again, if I put that on, uh, get rid of this, the bounce. If I put that on 180, or rather uh, 179, always consider zero to be a number. I know that sounds daft, but if you put it on 360, it would go one tick more and then bounce back on the loop. So you'd end up with a slightly, and I can, if I exaggerate that by putting it on 370, you'll see what I mean. It will do a full rotation and a bit extra and then jump back. Doink. And you get that twitch. You don't want that. Um, so, 0 to 360, uh, 359 <laughs> is what you want, because 0 is a number 2. You could put it at 1, and then put it at 360 if you wanted, um, but generally that's called U-bound in, in mathematics, um, and you, uh, you, wanted it, you want it there um, at 0 and 359. But that's, that's very limiting. All we've got is a car that rotates smoothly, and maybe that's all you want, but I want to do it mathematically. I don't want to do it through uh, their stock rotation object as is in the example. So I've improved this a little bit with this car here and we'll ignore the operators for a moment but if you look at this you can see they're rotating exactly the same way. Um, and what I've actually done here is the data source is now a sine wave and the, the way you set, set that up is you go here and you say I want my data source pick object value to be this sine wave. But if you just tell it to be a sine wave, it'll just be whatever the number is that you put in into your your sine wave data, which is here. Um, so you need an operand function. So I could put a number in there, um, and I'll, I'll reset the default. And all that'll do is rotate it through whatever that is. If you look at the number, which is currently saying 471, uh, going 489, 506, that's the number of degrees it would rotate based on that mathematical calculation, which would just jump there. And I can show you that. In fact, that's so small it's not even doing it. Let's whiz hugely. Right. So it'll just jump to whatever that is in degrees. Oh, it would help if I told it <laughs> to uh, use that data. Give me a second here. Right. Uh, I want you to your uh, 
based on that. Thank you. Now, it should just, there you go. There's no smooth rotation. So you have to introduce a linear rotation for the mathematical equation. So you still use the uh, curved data source, but you use it as a linear data source. And I currently have that set to zero and 21. Well, why do I have those numbers? Shouldn't it be zero and three, five? No, no because the sign uh, value of um, 21 is three, five, nine. Uh, it's actually 21.1 is the sign value of that. And these would be very small numbers, so by default it does actually times it by a thousand. And we'll, we'll cover that in a moment, because that can be a bit of a pain. But so, instead of having just this one hard number, we're going to have a value, which is the linear value here. And now, if we do it, we should be back to the smooth rotation, just like before. But, let's say we want the car to bounce up and down in a smooth way. This is, this is where we introduce uh, a division, because you might think that's very limiting, the sine times a thousand, and it is, but fortunately there's a way around that. You can't change that thousand operator. The reason it, they probably did this is because it effectively makes this non-floating point mathematics. Uh, it makes it integer sine wave mathematics. What I've done here is just improve on it a little bit, um, and I've actually introduced a division before it hits that data source, so we start the linear, just like before. But in this case, I am actually going to 359. I'll explain why in a moment. And then we're hitting the sign, just, just like before. Nothing else is different here. The, 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 the operand is there. It's still sign times a thousand. But then I've linked that to the division. And I'm going to set it to, say, 500. That effectively halves that data. It doesn't re really matter if you're exactly on it. Because what I wanted to do is, rather than have it smoothly rotate, I wanted it to bounce up and down. And using this, you could, for example, make a spaceship come down like Gallagher in a random fashion, not one that you pre-programmed. So we'll go to 500, which takes that data rate, and we'll see it. You can see it says 500 just here. Signs on zero. And when we do it, watch what the car does. It's now bouncing up and down in a linear, smooth sine wave. It has the, the quadratic ease in and out, but we haven't programmed it to do that. If you go here, you'll see it's, it's actually set to linear. The curve is linear. It, we haven't gone for the quadratic. We haven't used their ease in and out. So we could actually mathematically program it to go twice as high. We could even introduce a random number generator, which... Um, I, I did actually do, but apparently I've deleted it. <laughs> um, so that, that the d division could be different every time, every cycle it could change. So for, for now, it could be going up to that height. The next car along could be twice as high. So how would that, that work in terms of that? Well, it would be this division of, of, the, uh, of the, the actual maths. So if we change it down to, I'm not going to get it exactly. It will just go down to, say, 300 or 200. What's the car now? It's just that divisor. So we can introduce a random number for that divisor. If we put, by the way, zero, it, that's effectively rendering that moot, and we're still doing the, the times a thousand. If we put it at a hundred, it's a tenth of the value, which is why it goes higher, because the bigger the number, the, the bigger the, the leap. Let's put it up to 100 and I'll show you what I mean. Because it's the sine wave times 1,000. If none of this makes sense, what I recommend is just playing around with the setup that I've got here. Um, right, we're at 100. And it goes that high. And obviously it's going through the, the floor. We'd, we'd fix that. Um, but it's doing a really nice bounce up and down. And we can then take that value and apply it to the yaw, as we did before, without affecting the uh, going up and down bounce. So we'll do that. And you get this effect. Now, if that rotation is too great, but you like the bounce, you would have to duplicate this mathematical formula and change the divider. So we can make it go up and down slower or faster by the divider, but we'd have to have a separate divider for the rotation. Because, you know, that rotation might be too fast. But you can sort of see the potential here to get um, a randomization, something that you cannot do with this. I mean, you could introduce a random number to begin and end it, but this smooth rotation is sort of set in stone in its simplistic form here. Uh, 
and they've given you the tools to do that so if you, that's all you want it to do that's the best way of doing it don't bother working out the mathematics like we've done here on the other hand let's introduce a random number just have a bit of fun it'll probably look very strange but we're going to introduce a, a trigger and an event and it's going to be a data source and a random data source here now the random data source you, you tell what the seed is obviously that will be the randomization what the maximum should be well we divide in sign by a thousand so the maximum say the minimum let's make the minimum a hundred or so and that it, it doesn't have to be exact and the maximum say 500 so somewhere between a tenth and a half of the speed now how often does it do this currently it's set to one second let's make it say um three or four seconds so it's 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 obvious when it happens so there we go just over four seconds it'll choose a random number but of course we still have to tell the divider that that's what we're doing so we go here and we say to the operand which is currently set to 100 it's going to be that number there and what will happen is, is it'll go up and down and it'll spin around and it'll change every four seconds so we'll start that off one two three four and you can see the random number being generated here it actually looks exactly the same <laughs> it's probably because the random number isn't uh, great enough let's let's get rid of that rotation on the yaw because that's confusing us we'll get rid of that and let's see if that actually changes not really changing it much maybe I need to up that random number to something crazy and we'll take it down a few seconds so we don't have to wait too long there we go there, now it changed then it changed then now you, know, you can see it jumping we did oh there's a big one so you can very much see how th this could be useful for randomizing an event um, especially if you're making some artistic level not necessarily something based in the real world you will have to learn ideally you will have to learn how to control these operands the maths the random the data source um, learn how to uh, differentiate the difference between a data source and, and a, an applicator and um, once you've got that I mean it's really nice the way it does the arrows you can sort of see we start with a linear number which goes I think we had it set to um, three five nine and it goes to the sine wave which comes here and then it divides it by a random number which could create crazy mathematics and then it sends it to the car and again don't worry about the interval trigger here so whilst it looks complicated it's actually fairly simple and so hopefully that's given you an insight into using uh, more complex mathematics within the track fusion um, track fusion trials fusion track editor um, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, leave me a comment and uh, hopefully I'll expand on it. And if this is a, a successful video, I'll, I'll actually make a Gallagher style movement um, of a spaceship kind of coming down as if you were going to make a Space Invaders type game um, using this principle. My name is Vinny Voodoo. Thanks for watching.